We're here at the RA Dinky Show. This is the moth behind me. This is like the original foiler, you know, the one that we all sort of saw. We've all watched it on YouTube, the high speed, all the crashes, all the carnage. Um, so it's kind of like the king of foiling, really, right now. Um, so we're going to have a look around the show, see all the other boats uh, that are here, the new boats. So some of them have been around a few years, and see if any of the new foilers can take the crown. So the wasp. Uh, Duncan, this is the 700th boat globally. What's going on in the UK scene? We have 75 boats. We've got a new circuit. Uh, we had one last year. It's grown this year. We're going to have a lot more boats. Sponsored by Zyke for the class. So it's all quite exciting, to be honest. And why would I choose a wasp? One design. I think this uh, possibly is the world's largest one design foiler. Always put it out there. If someone can we'll come up with it, check you, yeah, check, you check it, double check it because I'm not aware of another one design foiler that's as big as this. 700 boats. So, where are we going? We're going to keep going up, to be honest. We're going to get bigger and better. Pages of the Wasp, you've got two rigs, have you? Two yes. rigs. We've got an 8.2 sail and we've got a 6.9. Uh, 6.9 is perfect for probably my size or, or smaller, 65 kilos or lighter. Um, and obviously, the 8.2 is better for the bigger people. Um, it's one design. All, the only thing you can change is the colour. So why is the Wasp the single-handed foiler that I'm going to buy? Because it's one design, it's affordable, 11 grand for a boat that gets you foiling, the passion that we talked about earlier, that moment of silent kind of acceleration. Um, it, it's just an exciting boat and because it's affordable, people are getting involved and the class is growing. F101 and we've got Rob, Rob Andrews here to tell us all about it. Rob, what, what's the USP of the 101? I suppose the USP was that uh, Alan used to teach foiling, mainly in moths, and quite a lot of uh, the moth size and width makes it quite unstable. So we wanted to come up with a boat that was far more stable and would allow pretty much anybody to get into foiling and you know as their foiling develops they can move on to racing moths and things like that but when you're learning this is far easier to learn on than a moth or a wasp or any of the unstable okay. foiling boats that are out there. And so but it's not a beginner like it, can you sort of do your foiling career in it like when you sort of get up and going and know what you're doing like it still would have the wow factor of high speeds and everything. Yeah absolutely uh, you can do foiling jibes all of that you know sustained flight yeah. And, uh, and we're now racing them, so yeah. Cool. So how many, have you got any fleets anywhere? Uh, there's a fleet in uh, Marmanor in Spain, that nice, they tend, nice to, tend to stay there for the winter <laughs> where it's always a bit warmer than the UK. And now we're starting to build up dealers, we've concentrated on dealers. So we've now got about half a dozen dealers around the world. They're starting to build up little tribes. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing about the F101 is we tend to have uh, lots of shared boats. So you can go to another tribe without taking your boat and share boats and still have events. So we, we like to go to cool places and... And build the community that yeah. way. Yeah. We are with Sean and the Skeeter. So apart from an excellent name, Sean, what, uh, what has the Skeeter got that is sort of made standing it apart from the other boilers out there? Uh, yeah, well, it's basically um, really good for entry-level foiling, and it's um, from what we've noticed and seen on the water, it's really good at a performance level as well. So it's got two rigs, and plenty of options for many people to sail it. It's um, a wide hull. It's a, an old scow moth design. So basically, it's not very tippy. So when you're sailing in displacement mode, it's very easy to drop the foils. If it gets really windy or really light, it's very easy to sail home. Um, and the control systems on it are very, very simple. Cool, so I can learn to foil in it, um, but once I'm up and running and I've been foiling for a year, am I still going to get like thrills and thrills in the scooter? Absolutely. They've done a really good job with the rig and the setup inside the boat, so it's simple, but it's, uh, it's awesome in the performance end. So um, there's people that can foil tack it, it can foil jive, um, it's, it, it's fast, it's a huge wind range, it gets foiling in seven or eight knots and then, and then uh, keeps going. So. What's the kind of weight bracket? Right. Uh, I think up to around sort of 85, 90 kilos from what we've seen, the sort of top end. And then there's a, a smaller rig for the, for the lighter sailors. We're with Dave, who is here first time in the UK this year with his 
of the year, 2018. Tell us, what have we got? Uh, well, we took all the things that I loved about the Moss and used it to make it possible for my friends to continue sailing. So, so that, that was the why, was it? This is the motivation for it. I've been sailing high performance boats since I was a little kid. I've been building and sailing fast race boats since I was five, really. And uh, as it went on, I was immune to a lot of other factors in play. I was a boat builder, so I had great kit and I had the ability to repair it and work on it. And I had great support. But my other friends who came up in Opti's with me, who were better than me at sailing, to be honest, left because they didn't have the money, the time, there was no avenue for them to stay in the sport. And I struggled to try and build fleets of, you know, performance boats and I failed. Okay. And what I realized was it was a lot of it can be dealt with with technology because there's the attainability financially, there's the attainability skill building wise, there's the attainability maintenance wise, there's the attainability in storage, and the attainability of actual fun. Again and again, as you grow, you need a boat that will actually be a verdant space for you to develop skills and reward you as you grow. So you may not be very good, and the boat needs to forgive you for that and allow you to continue to learn. So the thing we found is that actually, of all things, the hydrofoil, which is supposed to be some sort of high-end, cutting-edge tech that is a pinnacle for you to aspire to, is actually a vehicle for you to get there. UFO, uh, a huge wind range you can go out in, uh, can lose power, can gain power with its fancy widget up there and foils that you can launch really easy in and, and drop. And it's cheap. And it's cheap. And now we have got this beauty, the Flying Mantis. Last year we had our first production boat uh, that still had some development work attached to it. But now we have full production boat, uh, which we see here, and it, it, it's really uh, sort of the super yacht end of, uh, of the market for us, which is why we have it in brilliant red, <laughs> and it's really quite something to look at. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, so, what um, when you sort of learn? Is it a learning? Can you learn to fall in this, or do you sort of need to kind of move into this once you know what you're doing? Very much so. It's very much designed as uh, easy foiler, so uh, it, 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 you can start it off. It, I mean, it, one of the unique things about it is it's actually two boats in one. So it can be sailed as a conventional trimaran with a, with a dagger board and a lift-up rudder at the back. Get used to it as a boat, just where all the controls are and how it feels, and then swap into it these foils, uh, T-foils at each end, and then learn to foil. And it is very stable because of the outriggers. Mm -hmm. Gives you stability, pops you up rather than just chucking you in the water yeah. when you go swimming. And so because it's sort of a bit bigger, a bit more volume, is it the weight range is sort of a quite big weight range on it as a sailor? Yeah, it's just designed really for people like me uh, and uh, sort of taller, heavier sailors. It'll do up to about 120 kilos in weight. Amazing. And you yeah. get foiling in what, at 120 kilos? <laughs> Well, I need to do a lot more lessons myself <laughs> and learning it. <laughs> but uh, it, it will foil in about uh, six, seven knots of boat speed. So okay. it's, it's getting up pretty early, and that's because we've got quite a large uh, wing under the, under the foil. So. Yeah. We've been around the show and seen a whole range of foilers. There's something out there for whatever price budget, kind of sailing you want to do, and weight you are. I'm not sure if any of them uh, right now have the sort of following that the moth has got. Uh, it sounds like there's loads more boats in the pipeline that will be coming out over the next few years. So I think it's still a bit of a wait, watch this space and see if any of them can take the crown off the moth.